herdsmen invaded Ogun community to destroy and kill. Okay, Paul's special report. According to the traditional leader of the community, herdsmen have been attacking and killing members of the community since 2006. Asa is an agrarian community in the Yewa region of Ogun State. It is one of many. It is one of the many villages that share boundaries with the Republic of Benin in the local government. While its proximity to the Francophone country through one of the porous borders is less than five kilometers, its distance to Ilaro, the adjudged capital of Yewa land, is about forty kilometers. Apart from the fact that a few people in the community own bikes, which some of them use for commercial purposes, there is little or no sign of modernism in Asha Ibeko, Agbon Odudu, Iselu, and other surrounding communities. Some of these communities are dotted with mud houses and barns made of thatch at their backyards for the preservation of crops after harvest. However, a settlement one expects to be peaceful due to its rural nature and the rustic lifestyle of its of its inhabitants was recently thrown in turmoil after criminal headsmen displaced its residents and set their homes on fire. On Easter Monday, when Paul's visited Asa, the community looked like a shadow of itself with its residents still living in fear of an imminent return of the herdsmen. Faces of many residents in the community whose property were burnt to ashes still reflect the sad memory of the February 14th tragedy. According to the acting ballet, the traditional head of the community, Chief Matthew Akonde Olukoko, herdsmen have been attacking and killing members of the community since 2006. Olukoko, who shared pictures of previous victims of herdsmen attacks in Asha with Pulse, explained that herders usually killed their victims on their farms, but in February they invaded their town, shooting and setting properties ab ablaze. For many residents of Asa, the sporadic booms of gunshots that sent chills down their spines in the evening of the Valentine's Day would never be forgotten in a hurry. Well, if the place is not as modern <laughs> or not, you know, or hasn't kept up with the way of life, wow, the way of life of, you know, the rest of Ogun State, then what do you expect? It's probably for the headsmen a good was probably like a strategic easy attack because they knew that you know what as this community is very rural in terms of lack of development security and attention really um you know it's it was an easy target for them which is unfortunate and you cannot be surprised and someone says the people controlling this country nigeria are idiot and evil people rise up and defend your land these people are determined to overrun anybody this is the thing your land i think is the is the land that is the testament to your freedom that shows how free you are um like how it is you have to defend your land and again what are you scared of i i i think that i know the country is not what what are you going to die for the country is not worth you know anything to be honest so why not if the probabilities are high of you dying, why not die for a cause? It doesn't make sense. Uh, so it's like, why would no one... I mean, at the end of the day, the fact is, you might want a revolution at different times, but when a, when a collective people are ready to make a change, they will make a change. And, um, you know, nothing will stop that. Because that's it. Of course, this is... <laughs> This will continue happening. It will continue to happen because there are a lot of communities in Nigeria which, you know, are part of you know a well-known state. But of course, because they're very detached and alienated from, um, alienated from you know the actual hub of where business activity is, it makes it easy to attack. And it, and it should not be. It really shouldn't be. I'm going to read what um malcolm x said about land he says revolution is based on land land is the basis of all independence land is the basis of freedom justice and equality period point blank it really is and i think that like the fact just to make it simple when nigerians are ready for a change a change they it will be it will happen but i i think that it doesn't mean that you know we can't provoke it it doesn't mean that we can't we can't start now because wasting time time waits for nobody and there is no point because again where do we want to get to as nigerians before we actually stand up you know where do we where, where do we want to get to 
um, when we've had excess damage, excess damage to our future generations, excess damage where we are damaged, we give birth to children, we transfer that damage, and then that transfer keeps going on. We've, we're already damaged enough. Things have already happened where just the mentality of, you know, living in the country, you, you have to, for you to work in a zoo, like, you have to think like you're in a zoo. You have to think in abnormal ways just to have your daily living. But however, it doesn't mean that it is, it is ingrained in us. I mean, it can be, but it just shows that for us to alienate ourselves from the abnormal, we just need, you know, a, a system, you know, a system that we respect because it's the same thing. Nigerians will go, will act different in their country, do whatever they like, but then they understand that going to another man's land, there are rules and there are systems to how you do things and will not necessarily go and disrespect or do things that are out of order because they understand that the law is applied and it will be, is respected. And so they will not get away with it. Um, and I think that that self-respect, we need to have it to call it our own and follow it um so yeah let's even look at what the comments say somebody said it is a shame for a police officials to say that police cannot stay in a community where mayhem was committed and kill people for days um to give the community confidence that their country will protect them in time of crisis it is a big shame to the police that's it i mean in Again, no matter where you might call it a place rural, it might not be the hub of business activity and all that. However, the basic amenities should be everywhere in the country, as in every single where, as in when it comes to light, um, new schools, security, everything. Those are the basics that a community can function properly with good infrastructure, good light, good roads. That's all it is. If it is in, let's say it is in Lagos or it is in Portacos or if it's in Abuja where we have this high sky rising buildings and all that, absolutely fine. Do your thing. That's absolutely fine. But for the basics of just being a, a where our welfare is or when where you know we're developed economically, you know it's just not just economic growth but economic development where our welfare is being taken care of. That that's what that's what really matters. Um, so yeah, somebody also says. People rise up and... Oh, I already read that. Uh, someone says, is this how we're going to fold our arms and allow terrorists kill and destroy our country? I don't know. I do not know the insurmountable amount of pressure that we need to do. And I think that sometimes it may, it may seem defeating, but um, Southerners are not even up to half <laughs> of the country's population. And um, we need that. We need, we need to provoke the North to also join us in this, where... We will have a family meeting and decide, okay, do we want to fight one Nigeria or want to separate? And then we'd have, you know, because I think we're just too divided in, in our future on what we want as Nigerians. Like, we actually need to decide, do we want to stay together or do we want to separate? So we know what we're fighting for and there's no confusion about our aim. So I think, and don't forget to like and subscribe.